Yeah, that's it, that's good. Just put both hands up around your face, tickle your face, that's great. Just tilt into, that's it, a little bit more. Kelly Cartwright is about to step boldly onto the world stage. And you like Kelly's teeth, don't you? Yes. <laughs> they better be good, Mum paid four and a half grand for braces. <laughs> OK, looking good. <laughs> With the looks of a model and a lust for life, this bubbly 19-year-old is rarely without her smile. That's a great smile. Just put your hand behind your neck, that's it. Kelly's discovered a whole new life from the depths of devastating personal trauma. Beautiful. Do you get self-conscious at all? Um, I used to get self-conscious a lot, like wearing shorts and things, but um, now it's what I've got and what I have to live with, so why not just let people see it? We go. And lots of people will see Kelly when she swaps this Geelong training track for the Olympic Stadium in Beijing. Set! Go! 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 Good! An estimated global audience of one and a half billion people will witness her Paralympics debut using a special carbon fibre blade to run in the 100 metre sprint. What's it like not having a lift? I don't remember having two legs, to be honest. I think I think always think about. Imagine if I wake up with two legs tomorrow. I think I think I'd probably fall over. I wouldn't <laughs> remember. I wouldn't remember how to walk. Kelly's part of our 170 strong team going for gold in China. So too is rower Catherine Ross. Both girls chosen to represent their sports at the team's official launch. I think what's inspirational for all Australians is people just saying no to the obstacles. You know, yeah. Just say, just blasting you know, through them. Just, you know, yeah. Let's just push overcoming. that to one side and boof. I don't think we we don't see, well, I can't speak for you, but I don't see myself as having any obstacles ever. Like Kelly, Catherine has overcome incredible odds to wear the green and gold. When she was a toddler, an accident left her right leg virtually useless. Now, just one year after stepping into a boat, she'll represent Australia in mixed rowing. What is it like to know you're going to represent your country? Oh, it's, um, every time I think about it, it's, it's kind of a, a, a knot in my stomach that works its way up. It's an unbelievable feeling. It, I never thought I'd ever make it to something like this. You know, I've gone from someone who has had to learn how to walk a million times over and, and someone who was never really picked for certain things at school. From schoolyard struggles to one of the biggest sporting events on the planet. Remarkable for anyone, but especially for Catherine and Kelly. At 15 years of age, Kelly Cartwright had an ideal life. The popular Year 9 student was doing well at school and playing top grade netball. Then her knee started to hurt. It was the most painful pain I've ever felt. Excruciating. Very painful, very, very painful. First, doctors diagnosed growing pains, then a cyst, but the reality was much, much worse. Kelly had synovial sarcoma in her right leg a rare and aggressive form of soft tissue cancer. My whole world spun around and, um, yeah, everything, just my whole life ahead of me and the unknown of what was going to happen now that I've, I've got cancer. And I guess the first thing I thought about it, am I going to die? Am I not going to live this life anymore? In many cases, it's a fatal cancer and resistant to chemotherapy. At just 15, Kelly was faced with little choice. Unless doctors amputated, she was likely to die. I just said I'd rather die than get my leg amputated. What was making you think that? Is it self-image? Yeah, probably being vain and probably worrying too much about what other people think. I just hope it doesn't rain. Oh, it looks pretty good. A devastating thought with so much life ahead. But just imagine what it was like for Kelly's parents, Bill and Jan, watching their little girl facing a life and death decision. To hear your daughter say, I'd, I'd rather die, you just, you just want to take her place and say, well, let it be me, you know, not her. I just looked at mum and she started bawling her eyes out and dad's face, I'll never forget the look on dad's face. I would have given everything to be in her place, ever, anything in the world, but uh, it wasn't to be. 
but the most they could do was be by her side for the worst of it, and the very worst was the morning of the amputation. What was the drive like to the hospital? I asked mum millions and millions and millions of times to turn around and go back home. I remember sitting in the hospital going, let's go back home. I know how hard that would have been for them, knowing how I felt, saying, please mum, can we just go back home? I don't want to do this, I don't want to do this. But I knew that I had to do it. I don't think if they turned around, I don't think I would have gone back anyway, because I know that I wanted to be alive then. Kelly had to learn to walk again with a prosthetic leg. It was a tough, painful process. Oh, he's going to jump. To oh, ease the way, really Kelly good. adopted a special go. friend <laughs> to share the journey. <laughs> yes, a three-legged cat called Jamaica. He's good. He gets around and catches mice still, and he does everything like a normal cat would. It took five months, quicker than most, but this Year 10 student had a goal, her debutante ball. So where did you get your dress made, Kelly? Bridal house. OK. <laughs> yeah. I was still a little bit self-conscious about what people thought, so I got a specially made dress so you wouldn't see my leg. And um, I did have a fair bit of a limp, but I think everyone was just amazed to see me actually out there walking so soon. I bet you were amazed too. It was probably the best night of my life. I loved that. Miss Kelly Cartwright! It was so emotional though. We were just really... <laughs> just uh, she had this really old, old leg on that had big, huge straps around it that was so heavy and to see her dance and, oh, just couldn't believe it. What really blew us away was right at the end, she curtsied. Mm -hmm. She actually got down and curtsied. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Can you still see her dancing, Jan? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's pretty vivid, isn't it? Mm. Mm. Catherine Ross remembers her debutante ball vividly too, a milestone many people thought she would never make. When she was two, she was accidentally run over by a ride-on mower driven by her father. To this day, her right leg is virtually useless. My kneecap is shattered and it currently still is shattered. It's in, in bits everywhere. I've got a couple of screws that have been there since I was 10 years old. And the ankle is fused and depending on the weather, I may get slight movement out of it, but otherwise it's completely fused. Playgrounds can be ferocious environments. How was it for you with a disability? It was quite um, difficult at, in some stages. I got things from Bigfoot, um, Retard, Hoppy, Skippy, um, oh God, Cripple. I got, you name it, I probably got it. Two decades later, and more than 30 operations since the accident, Catherine has marched on from the cruelty of schoolyard bullies. This girl from Warrnambool has had to put her passion for pipe bands to one side as she prepares to row for Australia. Well, is there a sense now that I'm 27, I'm off to the Paralympics? And just have a look at me now. I always expected to get somewhere but um, to get to here is absolute pinnacle and, and it's wonderful to be able to sh say to those people who ever said anything nasty to me or upset me or anything like that, said I couldn't do anything, it's great to say, look at me now, I'm, I'm shining. <laughs> and a big part of that bright outlook is because of the man sitting behind her, Catherine's rowing partner, John McLean. This bloke has swum the English Channel, competed in the gruelling Hawaiian Ironman and raced at the Sydney 2000 Olympics. And he's a paraplegic. How's the build-up to Beijing going? Do you feel good as a team? Very strong, very, very strong. Very pleased at the moment. Positive thinking is all part of the training. And what better place to focus the mind than Sydney's Olympic rowing course, where so many champions have stood before. John and I went and sat on the podium. It's a bit silly, but we're visualising what we're doing. And we sat on the top and we visualised that there was a crowd in the, in the stands. So we're good enough to do this, right? Oh, yeah. All right? Four weeks. Cool. Very cool. Give me some skill. 
just nice and gently. Gently, yeah. But Catherine's certainly not going to win gold with me in the boat. How am I going? You need to turn your oar a bit more. I can't talk and row. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a skill. John doesn't do it either. Uh, At least we're not in the water, Catherine. We're, this we're sport well. isn't as easy well. as it looks. Oh! Back in Geelong, as Kelly Cartwright prepares for Beijing, her biggest worry is writer's cramp. What's your name? Holly. Everyone wants to meet this gorgeous girl and get a closer look at her secret weapon, that carbon fibre blade. Go! What are you running 100 metres in at the moment? Um, I qualified in February with a time of 17.62. And where's that stand in the world rankings? In the world rankings at the moment, I ranked fourth. In so the it's world? Fourth fastest time in the world, yeah. Hey, you're the real deal. Yeah. <laughs> Let me show you. Thankfully, when I took to the track with Kelly, she'd swapped to her walking leg. She can't go as fast, but it's just as high tech with a price tag of $62,000. Now this has a battery in it, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, and I have to remember to charge it every night, so I get my mobile phone and my leg and I try and charge them at the same time. Because um, one time it was, I forgot to charge it the night before and I was walking around Geelong and it um, slowly started to run out on me and I was like, oh no, and I was shopping and my leg, so I started to have to walk around like this because the knee just started to lock up. And I mean, you have to charge it to get that swing happening. So the batteries went flat and how are you walking? Oh, like this. <laughs> <laughs> I think I looked a bit, it's probably like how I walked on my old leg though, so. You're a pretty special young lady. Thanks. <laughs> Ten more laps. <laughs> These young women are more than remarkable athletes. They're remarkable people. You just know they'll give everything for their country in Beijing, but in so many ways, they've already won. I mean, the road has been long throughout the years, but... Um... I um, finally made it at 27. It's pretty unbelievable. Did you ever envisage this when you lay in your hospital bed? No, never. Never would have thought that I'd be training so hard to get to achieve something that I wanted so bad. And never thought I'd be training twice a day, six days a week, and actually thriving for something and having something to set. Like in the hospital, you didn't, I didn't have anything to look forward to at all. And then now I've got everything to look forward to the rest of my life.